I must do that. Uh, right, we're talking to uh, Wilma Home for the next ten minutes or so, five minutes or whatever. I don't, I don't know when you're um, you're out of here about half past. About the arms trade, I I'm interested. See, the, the calls are not uh, not interested. They want to talk about Billy Bunter and the naming of houses, but that's quite interesting because maybe none of us give a sh uh, none of us care about this. And uh, we're we just uh, we're just going on and thinking. Well, you know, we sell arms to the uh, we sell arms to the WAPs. Who cares, really? You know, we know how to use them better. But you're saying we don't make that much money out of it. It's not that that important to the country. It's only because certain people in certain areas think that we have uh, then got some kind of um, uh, power and clout. Yeah. That's it. How do we how do we rate with the Americans? Uh, increasingly badly. Really? Yeah, because the Americans are getting a real grip on the world market now. And they make better stuff than we do. Much better and much cheaper. Much cheaper. Yeah. Oh. Oh. This is very, very worrying. I'm, I'm upset about this. Well, I thought we at least we were going to say that we make the best weapons, the no. best machines no. to kill. Not at all. Not at no. all. No. 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 We've got best submarines, haven't we? Oh, really? I mean, the, the problem you've got is the United States is a really, really big domestic market. Mm. So they make, they make... Tanks things. for each other. Yeah, cheaper. They make it cheaper, and it's better. Yeah. And if we wanted to cut our military expenditure, I mean, I wouldn't argue this, but one could say that you should buy everything from the United States. Which is, I mean, what sometimes is happening, but uh, then we would really, uh, making domestic stuff would, would be bad. We'd be losing a lot of that, employment over here. Yeah, that would be a security problem, yeah, also, yeah. because, you know, you can't have one. They might take screws out of certain things and we might not know about it. Well, exactly. So, I mean, you know, the, but the Americans are way ahead of everybody else. The Russians are selling clapped out second-hand equipment across the world, and that is actually cutting in our, into our capacity, our ability to sell to regimes. Why actually are the Russians selling what is falling apart? Why do people want to buy the, the bad? Russian falling apart stuff. Because there are some countries that can't afford any better. So they'll do with what's second best. Yeah. Because their neighbours are also in the same position. So there are kind of arms races going on with second hand and very, very poor equipment. Do we keep an eye on the sort of countries that are unstable and are quite likely to turn on us and, and are quite likely to just sell weapons to terrorists? No, I don't think we do. I think what we there must are, do. We no, must do. I don't think we do. I think there are certain nations which are uh, focused on as pariah nations like Libya or Iraq, yeah? and the rest of them, you know, we'll just sell to anybody. We will sell to anybody. We will sell to a regime in Indonesia that's carrying out a genocide in East Timor. Now, there's a genocide going on, and that's a terrorist regime, but we are doing our best to sell. So what is, I mean, we, you know, what is our excuse for doing this? Well, it's the excuse that Margaret Thatcher came out with, which is that you, by selling arms you have influence and we can make, the, make that nation better. We can wield influence with that nation. Carl in Middlesex, you're on tour radio. Hello. Oh, hi. I, I like to say how, how I completely agree with it. I myself come from a repressive regime with a country with a repressive regime, which is Iran. And during the Iran war, I'm sure the person with you is aware of this, that the West supplied both Iran and Iraq with weapons to fight each other. And this war war, um, I think, cost most civilian lives in recent wars, you know, I think that includes uh, uh, World War II, over a million civilians died in this war. I'd like to point out that this is completely true, and that there should be something done about this, before even more innocent people are killed in the world due to selfish, you know, immoral, greedy politicians. Thank you, right, Carl. Uh, Alan in Birmingham, there's no answer to that, really, is there? Uh, Alan in Birmingham, you're on Talk Radio. Hello. Uh, hello, James. Yes. Um, I was interested as to whether your guest can confirm or deny rumours that the Church of England is involved with um, either holding shares in various arms um, suppliers or whether it's involved in some sort of sponsorship or whatever or vice versa. Well, well, the Church of England appears to have rewritten one of the commandments, which is thou shalt not kill unless you can make a whacking great profit out of it. And, <laughs> and, right. the, and they have millions of pounds of shares in armed companies, GEC in particular. Do they know this? I mean, they, yeah. they are, they're not stupid, are they? No, they, they know. Do, they do understand. They know this. it. And their, their unofficial rule, they won't write this down, but their unofficial rule is that as long as it's less than 30% of the company's production is for mm. military production, then it's okay. But you would think, here's, a, here's, a, here's an organisation that are... Uh, tomorrow I'd like to speak to somebody from the Church of England about this, please. Uh, you would think that the, uh, the the people who are involved and are so worried at the moment about Charles marrying Camilla, as if that was the most important thing in mm. life, uh, are involved in, in uh, companies and having shares in companies that, that are keeping um, repressive regimes going. I, I mean, I, is there evidence that these companies are supporting are actually very repressive 
selling instruments of torture to foreign countries, or is it just simple arms manufacturing? Well, I mean, what, what GEC do is they make thermal imaging systems for Hawk ground attack aircraft. And if you yeah. want to attack somebody in East Timor, you need to be able to see them at night. And that's what these, these are used for. If you, GEC make the fire control systems for Mark III Vickers tanks, which are on the streets of Nigeria to repress the population. Fire control system allows the tank to fire. These are incredibly important pieces of equipment. The church is investing in a company which is critical to arms exports to repressive regimes. And quite how they just... Is it a good investment? Not really. I mean, if you look at... <laughs> this is the other thing. I mean, the church has a history of making terrible investments. First it was in, uh, in, in property and now it's in the arms trade. If you look at the share performance of most arms companies over the last 15 years, it's been terrible. Absolutely terrible. So, without any shadow of a doubt, Alan, uh, the, the Church of England do have money involved in, in companies that, that actually uh, supply arms. Yes, well, I think that's going to be very encouraging news to gay Christians. <laughs> Why is that going to be very encouraging news to gay Christians? <laughs> well, I, I, just think it's I just think it's rather nice that having them thundering down your neck for most of your life, it's nice to know they're actually involved with mass mode and everything else. So. Well, t telling you that because you're gay, you're not a proper person, you have no place in the church. But it's okay if you uh, wish to be involved with a company selling armaments. Exactly. Yeah. It's wonderful, isn't it? Well, I'm always amazed that every time I go past a very pretty little church in the country, there's a huge thing outside saying, please give money to our roof. <laughs> and then they're investing in this. You think they could put some of the money into into, into building up the roofs and things of these churches? I know. It's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Alan, thanks for your call. Okay, bye. bye, -bye. Uh, but I'm sure we can get tomorrow a spokesperson from the Church of England to uh, answer some of these, uh, these uh, questions and tell us why they do it and why they don't do it and give them their right of reply, which I would be delighted to do. Delighted to do. To me.